All right, welcome to this episode of I Like Being a Kid podcast, where we talk about children's authors and literature that we love. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Craig Jones. And I'm Carla Kirby. And we love talking with y'all about two authors every month, um, one picture book author and one chapter book author. Um, just to give you an idea, we swap um, chapter book and picture book authors. So I selected Kevin Hinkis for this month. So next month, I'm going to be covering the chapter book author. Yeah, and so this month, I chose Jacqueline Woodson. And so I'll be choosing the picture book author. And we'll kind of reveal those choices at the end of the podcast. Yes, yes. So. definitely. Um, so I guess I'm going let's, to start us yeah, off. Let's jump yeah, in. I don't know much about Kevin Hinkis, so I'm excited. He is fantastic. I have um, mispronounced his name my <laughs> on the life. last podcast where yes, he announced it. Certainly, well, I'm gonna be real honest. I didn't know who you were announcing. I was like, oh, exciting! Really? I don't know. Who you're announcing. Yeah, um, Kevin Hinkis is. I pronounced it as Kevin Hanks for the longest, <laughs> and then I did research, and then I was like, oh, I'm simply incorrect. Um, but he is sort of what got me, who got me back into reading picture books as an adult, oh, honestly. Okay. And it was actually with the specific book, Waiting, which he has the Caldecott Honor Award for. Um, I saw the cover and I immediately fell in love with it. And a lot of the reviews really took a sort of a more... I suppose intellectual approach okay. to him and they were like oh yes Kevin Hinkis is all about like existentialism and everything and I was like this is about five toys on a windowsill that are just <laughs> waiting for different precipitation <laughs> <laughs> but it, I don't think of his books as intellectual but I love them yeah I mean I suppose that there is a lot of like existentialism Deeper in there sure, sure. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them are just really, adorable. yeah, adorable, adorable, really nice, like comfort books. Oh, you know, I yeah, would definitely. They're like comfort, they're like mac and cheese of books. Yeah, <laughs> really. And like the illustrations just hammer that comfort in. I don't, if you can see the illustrations, they're very like rounded, very soft, I suppose you yeah. would say. And so I really love looking at his illustrations. Now, is he, so he's an author illustrator combo yes okay. he is he hasn't illustrated all of the books that he has written gotcha. um and, but he is he does do both um he grew up in Racine, wisconsin and he knew that he always wanted to be an artist which is ironic because he hasn't illustrated for every book that he's written but um he was always known in school as like the illustrator you know and the artist he actually submitted his first book at 19 oh, wow. during his first year in college um, or his early years in college rather and he said that he had a lot more confidence at 19 than he does now um because <laughs> didn't just, we all <laughs> honestly i can definitely relate to that um but yeah he just went into the publisher's office and was like here's my book publish it you know <laughs> I, I don't think that. it was quite like that um <laughs> no. but yeah it was it was really interesting to see somebody chase their goals right whenever they were so young you know he always started um with the Ill or with the word or the illustrations as i said he was really well known to be an illustrator in high school but um whenever he was in uh, he was a junior in high school his teacher just basically looked at him and said i would not be surprised if i saw a book with your name on it at all and so she encouraged him and instilled a love in him for writing and um just book crafting in general which we'll go into no you said he start like he illustrates first and then writes is that well actually he okay. starts with his words uh, okay, um gotcha. yeah but i i do know how i worded that and i see no, no, how no, you okay. got there um he does start with his words okay and but like i said he was always known for his art and because he loved art and he loved words he decided to combine the two together to create picture books he actually discovered them um in his adulthood he sort of revisited them and he always loved them as a kid 
but whenever he sort of rediscovered it, he was like, oh, that's right, I could make these, you know? Yeah. And that was sort of how he got back in there. He said that his favorite book is Is This You? by Ruth Prouse and Crockett Johnson, um, which is a book that, from what I could see, has sort of um, fallen in um, ignominy, I suppose. Okay. Um, I've never heard of it. I'm so sorry. But it's yeah. no longer being published. Um, I couldn't really find okay. any ready ready publishers. Yeah. But he uses it actually as a template and uses it to like oh. give advice. He lives in Madison, Wisconsin. So he's, and... he's still with us. Kevin yes. Smith. That's terrible. Yes. I don't know much about him though. I didn't know. Yeah, he is. Um, he uses or he works in his studio in his attic. Um, and he confirms that his <laughs> studio sort of has like this treehouse feel because like Aww. you're sort of like above it and can see all of the trees oh, cool. and everything, you know. And there's like so many books in there. There's a video of him like drawing in his studio and there's just, it's like wall to wall of books and not like like Lord of the Rings or <laughs> dictionaries, sure. but like, like books, yeah. you know, um, little picture books. And so I thought that that was just really interesting. I also thought it was interesting that he used a tool, that he uses a tool called a light box that he actually got for Christmas whenever he was a kid. And he's like even still using it. Cool. And apparently he's been illustrating for about like 40 years. Oh, wow. Now. Yeah. Okay. Um, he uses or he listens to music whenever he draws, but he doesn't listen to music whenever he writes, which leads me to believe he didn't say it in the interviews that I saw him in, but it leads me to believe that he listens to like lyrical music instead of instrumental. Uh, yeah. Um, because I'm the same way if I'm trying to like think of something creatively. I don't really like listening to music with words in it um, because it's sort of very easy. It's very easy to distract me. Um, he says that he's more naturally an artist than an author. And he said that he would much rather face an empty page knowing that he has to cover it up with illustrations rather uh, than with words. Um, which is really interesting because he also writes yeah. novels. You know, he's got Billy Miller Makes a Wish, which got a Newbery honor. Awesome. Um, no, that is the year of Billy Miller. Okay. Um, not Billy Miller Makes a Wish. Okay. But, and he's got books like Genonia, um, which is a type of seashell, oh. and then Bird Lake Moon. I love that cover. That's oh, so yeah. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I actually own that book. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I was in a bookstore that I um, really have a close emotional connection to, <laughs> and I saw Kevin Hinkis and I, his name, and I was like, oh, I love his picture books. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to get it. So. I've never yeah, read any of his chapter books, honestly. Yeah, I've um, <coughs> read Genonia and I've read like some of his others, but it's okay. been years, yeah. you know. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> he talks about an ideal picture book in a way that the words and the images cannot be separated. He thinks uh -huh. that the two should be like intermingled in a way that can't be, which if you read like A Good Day, I can definitely see that. Both A Good Day and Kitten's First Full Moon. Okay, um, and see, that's important because that's what makes him a good candidate for Caldecott Awards. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. like, I remember it was in one of my classes um, in library school, but, um, you know, some years I see the Caldecott winner and I'm like, oh, how did that win? The pictures aren't nearly as pretty as the other three books. Yeah. But one of the criteria they go by is do the illustrations help tell the story? Sorry. That's, like, the main criteria. And so... Mm -hmm. Even if a book has gorgeous pictures, if it's not telling the story, it's not going to be a Caldecott winner. So that's why he's great, I think, yeah. for that. Yes. Yeah, definitely. He, um, in one of the interviews, he actually brought out like a string of illustrations mm -hmm. and it showed how even with the illustrations, with the backgrounds being different, uh -huh. the rabbit was still like uh -huh. making a hopping thing, sort of like it was a storyboard, yeah. you know? Um, so I thought that that was really interesting. Yeah. He focuses a lot on the book as a whole, which sort of goes back to his book crafting and the rabbit jumping. Um, even if it's not like noticed or appreciated by the audience, he sort of he was sort of emphatic that I am making these books for myself, you know. 
Um, in that way, he is able to present a book that unifies his parental and his child audience because he is not only writing a book to appeal to the children, but also to the parents who are going to be purchasing the book. He prefers succinct picture books, which if you've read A Good Day, there's like, I'd be surprised if there were 50 words yeah. in this book. Um, mm -hmm. But it is so beautiful and just so good. And a lot of these are really good story time books, too. Yeah. You know, not so much with the mouse books, with like Chrysanthemum and sure. Owen Wimberly Worried. But Kitten's First Full Moon, fantastic. Old Bear, great. Um, a Good Day, very good. Waiting, I tend to avoid waiting just because there is... Um, and there's like a page that sort of worries me uh, yeah. that could be that could lead to some um further discussions sure you know now i will say even chrysanthemum like when we think story time books for us we're always thinking our mm -hmm. classic story time that's three to five year olds but i have read chrysanthemum aloud for like a say second grade class and it's great yes. for that like we, we tend to when we talk about story time books we're just thinking that preschool age Certainly. so chrysanthemum is a good read aloud for the right for the right age, age group, it certainly. really is. I love that book. Yeah, and Lily's purple plastic mm. purse. Oh, Here, yes. let me see if I can it's a good pull one. these up. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lily's big day is. Mice are always so very like <sighs> personality driven. Uh. You know, <laughs> Lily's big day. Um, Julius, the baby of the world, Wimberly Word, yeah. yeah. Um, Lily's purple plastic purse, Lily's big day, um, and I'm surprised I don't have chrysanthemum in here, but um, really good, up. probably so. <laughs> um, it's a but, classic. Yes, indeed, really good for a bit heftier of yeah. story times you know whenever your kids don't have have a little bit more of a stable attention span yes. i'd say and you're wanting to use a picture book like i think those picture books are more like here's a picture book and a story about a mouse or something but there's a deeper yeah. theme like we said yeah Definitely. so yeah there's a yeah there's some meat to it mm -hmm. and there's some really good like morals in those mouse mm -hmm. books yeah. too you know um but in a very assess like accessible Yes. I understand why, yeah. Yes, definitely. And then he has um, his seasons books as well that he did with Laura Dronzik. Um, my favorite one is the springtime book because I love those little creatures so much. I have is that a cat? I believe that is the conclusion that I have come to. Um, whenever I first saw them, I was like, oh, look at the rabbits. And then I noticed the ears. So I'm led to believe that they are more cats than rabbits. Um, <laughs> but he talks about why he's able to write to kids so easily. And he actually said, I'm not entirely sure, whenever I go see like Lion King or other children's media, I don't go there to try to figure out, hey, what's making these kids, like, what's taking these kids' attention, mm -hmm. you know? I'm just there to enjoy the story. And I think that that's ultimately the crux of what it is. Yeah. He's not focusing on trying to curtail to the kids. He's trying to meet them, you know, at their level, but still not top down to them, which I always think is the yeah. mark of a really successful, um, just person who works with children, right. you know. Uh, da, 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 da. He generally starts writing books with a character um, and then starts working from there, which really explains the mouse books, doesn't <laughs> yes. it? Um, because all of them are just, they're very loud personalities, mm -hmm. but very endearing personalities as well, you know? Um, as a final note, he has won plenty of awards and gained many honors. 
Um, he actually is one of the few people, possibly the only one, but the article that I found is like a bit dated, mm -hmm. um, that has his hands in the Newberry, Caldecott, and Geisel Awards. Ah, yeah. yeah. Um, his cool. Definitely. His Newberry Honor books are Olive's Ocean and The Year of Billy Miller. Mm -hmm. And he also has a Caldecott Medal for Kitten's First Full Moon, which nice. again, like if you haven't read Kitten's First Full Moon, read it. And whenever I read it, I sort of didn't really appreciate it because I was like, eh, it's just like any other picture book. But then I've read like so many since then and coming back to it, I can really find an appreciation right. for it. And I love, like, I know it seems dumb, but, like, for a picture book, like, a lot of kids are very, like, catch your attention. So I think it's kind mm -hmm. of really brave to do a black and white picture book. Yeah. Like, it, but it's attention guy. Like, it's not, I think it keeps their attention. It's not a, you don't sleep on that one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like he had actually mentioned that. He said that um, he had always wanted to do either a colorless picture book mm -hmm. or a picture book with very limited color, and it never felt right until Kitten's first school like game. So. Very cool. And that is Kevin Hinkis. Awesome. Kevin Hinkis. Well, I'm glad I got to learn more about him. Like I said, mm -hmm. I, bless me, I didn't even know if he was still with us. <laughs> so. So we have two living authors this month because Jacqueline Woodson is also still with us and she's amazing. I love Jacqueline Woodson. I will start by saying, so I'll talk about a decent amount of her children's books, but she also writes young adult and adult books. So I may speak of some like topics that her books tend to cover and you may think, oh, that's not children's. It's probably not. <laughs> just, just some of the topics her literature covers. She writes for all ages. Um, so Jacqueline Woodson, right now she's 60 years old. She was born February 12th, 1963. She was born in Columbus, Ohio. Um, they then moved to um, Columbus, oh yeah, South Carolina. But then when she was seven years old, they moved to Brooklyn. And so she kind of, her childhood was split between South Carolina and Brooklyn. Um, and she actually talked about that. I thought it was interesting. Um, how her writing is somewhat influenced by living in those two different worlds, like living in yeah. the South, living in the North, living in a city, living in the country. That's two very different yes. atmospheres. And they had just seven. I mean, you have a good memory of where you were, you know. Um, yeah. So this was actually a quote of her. She said, um, the South was so lush and so slow moving and so much about community. The city was thriving and fast moving and electric. Brooklyn was so much more diverse. On the block where I grew up, there were German people, people from the Dominican Republic, people from Puerto Rico, African Americans from the South, Caribbean Americans, and Asians. So that was kind of her to, I love that she tried to find the beauty in both places she lived. And yeah. it's really influenced her writing. So I think that's pretty cool, yeah. Um, but she got a BA in English from Adelphi University there in New York. Okay. Um, she always loved books, always, and she loved writing. Even as a child, she talked about she couldn't stop writing. She was writing all the time once she like wrote, I think it was like on the wall or something, she got in trouble wow. for it. <laughs> but yeah, she was always writing, like stories just coming out of her, always. Mm -hmm. um, some of her favorites were um, Hans Christian Andersen, The Little Match Girl, and Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. Wow, yes. gotcha. Those were two of the books she said kind of made her fall in love with books from yeah. her age. And she talks about too, um, as a child, but even now she considered herself a slow reader. Like she mm -hmm. did not read quickly. Um, she grew up in a house where um, she was not, like she said, TV was limited in several ways. First of all, we didn't have any channels. But second of all, we weren't allowed to watch TV for long. Mom would yeah. say, read a book, go play, do a craft, do something else. Um, so she talked about how when she would read, she would kind of, um, you know, like follow along with her finger and really slowly take in the words. And as she got older in school, they were like, you know, no, don't do that. But even still, she said in private, she would still do it because she felt there was something about reading slowly that helped her really take in the books and understand at a level where if she was just quickly reading, she didn't. You know, that that's sort of how i read i love and that that's really affirming she you know i'm not a quick reader she's at all. still to this day she said she prefers to read slow she yeah. thinks she takes it in more and she can read the same book three or four times and slowly read it and get something new every time like yeah i love that but so and if you she talks about that in her ted talk if you, anyone ever wants to watch she's got a okay. ted talk it's only about 10 or 11 minutes um, okay. you can find it on youtube but i thought that mm. was really interesting um and she's just amazing to listen to um she's very 
poetic when she speaks. Her voice is just very like powerful but calming at the same time. Um, several of her books are written in verse, not all, but she does have a very poetic way of speaking and presenting that's kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like she just is, Oh, mesmerizes you when she talks. Um, I can't wait to look oh, up the TED Talk. I love her so much. Um, so, she, and she's done a lot of interviews. If you're interested in Jacqueline Woodson, I mean, you go on YouTube, you will find so many interviews of her. Like, so she's very current and she, so many things she's always promoting. She just wrote one of her newest books is a picture book. Let me find the name of it because I'm going to forget. Oh, The Day You Begin. Okay. So she's still promoting that one. That one's such a good book. I don't have it here. Um, but just about like, sometimes when you walk into a place, you feel different for any reason. Okay. It could be how you look, how you act, how you talk. Just you don't feel like you fit in there exactly. And it can be scary. And it's just a book about being brave and yeah. feeling okay about who you are, no matter if you don't feel like you're the same as everyone else. Um, it's a beautiful book. Yeah, I love it. So that's- And what's the name of that one? Um, the Day You Begin. Okay. Yeah, so, and that one's, out now like I said I didn't get it it was checked out but uh, so it's not here but oh such a good one but yeah so she has won four um, Newbery Honor Awards um, she was the Young People's Poet Laureate from 2015 to 2017 okay. and then she, the Library of Congress named her the National Ambassador for Young Adult Literature from 2018 to 2019 she was won the Hans Christian Andersen Medal in 2020, which is fantastic because she loved Hans yes. Christian Andersen as a kid. And shortly after that, she was awarded um, the MacArthur Fellow, so she's kind of MacArthur Genius, you know, award. And then in 2023, which is now, she yeah. has a Guggenheim Fellowship, so wow. she is on it. Um, and she really she talked about too how she got started writing. Um, she was offered some kind of jobs that were. Um, would have been really good money and good writing. She didn't okay. She didn't name what they are, but if, if you watch those interviews, you, you can figure out what they were. Okay. Um, but she was like, they weren't what I wanted to write. And so I said, hey, I'll write these maybe under a pseudonym. Yeah. Um, and they turned out, and it was, it was a lot of money, and she turned it down to write what she wanted to write and the story she wanted to tell. And it's worked out great for her. I mean, yeah. yeah. So that was a very brave thing to do because starting out, um, yeah, you want to... <laughs> you want to make money and yeah she the got starving there. artist is yeah, definitely a real stereotype <sighs> this is another quote from her she said I wanted to write about communities that were familiar to me and people that were familiar to me I wanted to write about communities of color I wanted to write about girls I wanted to write about friendship and all these things that I felt like were missing a lot in the books that I read as a child so and I, I think I choose authors a lot. Now that I'm thinking about it, I talk about them almost every month, but authors who do that, they they write what they wish they had read. Um, yeah. Because that's kind of so inspiring to me. Like, because you can feel the authenticity in their books, I mm -hmm. always think. Like, you can yeah. feel this is something that they wish they could read, and this is something, this is how they see the world. And so I just, I love her so much. Um, she, I, I kind of left her sorry some of her life stuff um she is married um her, her, her she has a partner of years juliette wendoff um who is a physician as well and she has two children a son and a daughter and they live in brooklyn um but oh she also won the Coretta scott king award and the national book award sorry she's God. written over 40 books of like i said adult children's young adults it really runs the gamut we've got you know children's chapter books some of these um Peace Locomotion, and then this is her autobiography, Brown Girl Dreaming, and it is my favorite yeah. of her books. I love it so much. It is written in verse. I know that there's only a matter of time before I read it because ever since I have first laid eyes on that book, it's called to me. It so. is, yeah, and this one was a Newbery winner. Yeah. Um, yeah, it won a lot of awards. National Book Award, I do believe. Um, it won a lot of awards. But this is her life story. And it's in verse, and I love a book in verse. Love if you're not aware, oh. like, she is not just saying. <laughs> I love a book in verse. This is, um, one of her, um, yeah, also a Newbery Honor book, After Tupac and Dee Foster. So this is one of her YA, um, which YA, if you're a young adult, um, I know we, we throw yeah. around literary work, um, you know, abbreviations and stuff but it would be in the teen section here but it's considered young adult but this was one of her earlier um really i think one of her biggest hits kind of earlier on was um after tupac and d foster um but yeah so 
she talks a lot about how um, she did an interview once and it was so inspiring. She said, you know, I'm not here writing books by accident. She was like, mm -hmm. I was meant to be here to tell these stories. She was like, my mother was part of the civil rights movement. My grandmother was a teacher. My great, great grandparents were part of the Underground Railroad and I wouldn't be here without all of them. And so I'm telling their stories. Yeah. Um, and she, she, it's very important to her. Some people can will call her like an author of, um, like issue author, but she was like, I really just talk about questions everyone has, I think. Yeah, yeah I mean, Sim would call them issues, but um, she does have books about um, some of the themes, African Americans and society and history, um, sexual identity, economic status, gender. A lot of her books address those things. Again, a lot of those are in her young adult or adult books. Um, but even, you know, a lot about African American history and where they are in society. It's, um, there was some controversy about a couple of her books once that she had, put some things in and people were like, well, that's not, um, that's, that may not be historically accurate because that's not written anywhere. And she was like, it was about the Underground Railroad. And she was like, our history is an oral history. Yeah. She was like, we were not allowed to write and read and no one was gonna go up to the big house and say, hey, master, can you write down this story about how we're trying to escape? You know, yeah. um, but it was, she was like, I was just shocked that people were, and also she said it was offensive to her. She was like, are you calling my grandmother a liar? Like these are yeah. stories that were told to me. Um, so yeah, so that was interesting, but she really does like to tell parts of her history. Um, there was another book she was writing where um, one of the women, um, we know she was born here and this is where she lived, but the history, her name is lost. Gosh. And so she almost gave her a name and she said, you know what? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that be known in the book. Like because of the way our history was told and the lives we lived. Her name's not even known. We'll never even know what her name was. And she thought that was important to tell. Um, so I just, I love her books so much. Um, if you ever get a chance to read Jacqueline Woodson, um, she's one of those very quotable people. And you know, I love somebody with a beautiful quote. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, How many of her books are written in verse? Is Brown Girl Dreaming pretty much her only No, 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 there are others. Okay. I don't... Would I say 50-50? I don't know, because honestly, okay. I haven't read all of her books. Yeah. Certainly. Uh, but when you get into the YA, I think more commonly. Of let me course. just, I'm trying to see if the four I have, um, <clears throat> that may be the only one I have here in verse. But no, she's got more than one, okay. for sure. Gotcha. Um, so I'm looking at the ones that had won the um, Caldecott, or not Caldecott, I'm sorry, Newberry, Brown Girl Dreaming, After Two, Pock and D. Foster, Feathers, and um, Show Way. Snow Way, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, and then Peace Locomotion is also a really good one. And it looks like a super quick read. Yeah, too. very thin. This is, yeah, very good for a reluctant reader. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, like the AR level, but it's, yeah. a, it's a good one for some reluctant readers. But these are just like a few of the quotes from, most of these are from Brown Girl Dreaming because I love them. Just to give you an idea of her writing, um, she said, even it, even the silence has a story to tell you. Just listen, listen. <laughs> uh, but on paper, things can live forever. On paper, a butterfly never dies. And um, she, there's more, like I said, I could go on forever. She's amazing, but she just talks about how stories were always just spilling out of her, like just always, and she couldn't keep them in. Um, Oh, this is from If You Come Softly. Time comes to us softly, slowly. It sits beside us for a while. Then long before we are ready, it moves on. Wow. I love that. Yeah. I know. And then this is one more and I'll stop because I could go on all day. <laughs> <laughs> from Dragon um, This was also for Brown Girl Dreaming. Um, I believe in one day and someday and this perfect moment called now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That is good. It is such a beautiful book. Like, honestly, just I can't even count on two hands all the quotes to kind of take my breath away in yeah. that book. And that's such a versatile quote. Too. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's her life story, too. I love something in verse that really is conveying a whole story. It is her. It's her autobiography. Um, but, yeah, if you ever get a chance, Jacqueline Woodson, she is inspiring. She has done so much for literature, I think, and so much for just, like, telling – the african-american story in a really authentic way like um like i said historically but even now like what it's like to live now a lot of her books do comment on different like say economic statuses and social injustices and yeah. uh, but not in a preachy way i'm um, just in hey this is happening in these stories and you know this is what life is for people um so yeah that is jacqueline woodson i could go on forever she's <laughs> won so many more awards i couldn't even list them all i listed several but i mean awards 
Certainly. galore. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, that is Jacqueline Woodson. Please read her stuff. Like I said, for all ages, there's something, and she is just a beautiful writer and like an inspiring, beautiful person. Yeah. Love her. So, are we ready to announce? Oh uh, yeah, who we're doing the, next? Month? Okay. So you're starting uh, it yes. all? So I am doing the picture book author, so I will be choosing David Shannon. Okay, gotcha. No David, right? Yes, but also okay. Duck on a Bike. Oh, that's right. I forget that that's David Shannon. Yes, which and he is another author illustrator, so yeah. Yeah, gotcha. And I am picking um, probably one of the authors that most reigned in my childhood, Mary Pope Osborne. Oh. I tore up those magic treehouse <laughs> books so and let me tell you like those have like they, stood the test of they time they really have like yeah. i don't know how old they are we'll find out next month but they still check out just as quickly and mm -hmm. like steadily as they always have yeah and i mean we're gonna cover it next week That's gonna next be month. a good one because yeah i like yeah. both of those yeah fun i've tried to i picked david shannon because he's one of like if i have to choose my favorite story time book it is duck on a bike so yeah. i was like who's my favorite it's actually really funny because with mary pope osborne um i devoured and had most of the magic treehouse books growing up um and whenever we played trivial pursuit i <laughs> did not allow my father to have an option if i didn't know the question i was going to go see if i could look it up <laughs> um and nine times out of ten i could find the answer in a magic treehouse book oh, so yeah. awesome yeah all right well thanks so much for joining us and we will see you guys next month all right bye